Hey yo guys, welcome to the 7.3 patch of course, Restoration Shaman Guide and it's gonna be a long one, we have so many shit going on you may know some stuff, you may find up new stuff uh, I have, I'm talking about kicks, I'm talking about add-ons, I'm talking about macros some comps, some some general strategies you can do and adapt in your playstyle of how to use grounding for example when to shear, how to shear uh, how to purge more effectively uh, stuff like that, you know, so stay tuned, enjoy and um, yeah, we're gonna go right into macros and um, here we're gonna start with the urbine one cast at cursor the totems like slow, root, capstan you see, it's instantly there. I don't really have to select the circle. I already know the radius in, you know, like basically how how far it is. And as as much as you do, you know, like for example, this is a warrior, right? You can either place it directly under him or in front of him a, a bit. Like you could do something like this and he's gonna get rooted over there he, and he cannot kill the totem instantly. So after he gets out of the root he has to walk towards the totem, kill it and then run towards you. So this is a real useful macro just to instantly put a totem down. I have it for the airbind, I have it for... this is like all all of the talents in one all of this in one macro and it auto changes so this is very useful um, I also have for urban totem and for spirit link and spirit link as well is really important to get as fast as possible I was trying it with uh, casting on myself like like it was before you know like the default thing where you don't have to like project it and just be on yourself I found it that sometimes uh, I couldn't get it in time I mean I had to walk to the person and then cast the link and hope hopefully I'm gonna be in range because it's gonna be on my like like right over there right over here something like that and sometimes you would fail it, you know. It was working before. It was like before this patch. It was not actually before this expansion. It was really okay. You could have, you know, called for them to come near you when you were about to link and stuff like that. Now everybody's playing really clevy, uh, really clevy setups, and they do like stuns and bursts. So you have to be able to throw it most of the time you have to throw it and after you throw it you can jump into it but not the other around if you try to jump and then use it most of the time it will be too late so actually try to use and then jump it even though the delay is gonna be short because it's ticking every one second but in that one second you have time to like jump towards the totem so yeah that's a good one. I have a focus wind shear, which is also like my target wind shear. Is it my? It's my four. I don't really use it that much. I mostly use uh, the arena one to three that I have, which is also like for hexes. And this is mostly what I always use for interrupting. And there we are. It's like arena one, two, and three. It's really simple and it makes your life way 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 easier instead of like having to click on them or tap target and shear you just instantly know where they at and you just watch their position and you can interrupt everything easily I also have the odd cursor for my healing rain I only or mostly use it in the opener I haven't I don't really go for like refreshes of this because it's, it's not really feasible it costs way too much and it's not something I would use uh, on a regular basis maybe maybe with a weird spec but no it's not worth it uh, alongside I also have some party abilities these are I'm not using this anymore this is uh, from the interface now you can change it really easily 
uh, actually not this, it's key binds. So you have this targeting and besides these things you have the target part target party member one and two and I have my mouse buttons on this and these mouse buttons you used to be binded on these two macros which I don't use anymore. Uh, the only thing I hate about this when I double tap like when I do use my mouse button twice and uh, the target has a pet it's gonna go on the pet. That's the only thing that bothers me because I usually uh, spam target somebody and will get the pet and I will like earth shield the pet or something like that which is really really bad uh, so if you have this problem I would recommend having naming like I used to like this and just press put names in there and that's about it and then you're never gonna target the pet and that would be a really good solution with uh, so you have you don't have to think too much about it and uh, sometimes when I play like with same, the same people, I use this. I just change it and I use uh, the targeting by name. Same goes for Dispel, which should be right over here. So with the Dispel, it's really, really a good practice to not like target Dispel then target the other guy and, and you try to purge or you try to interrupt or whatever no that's too slow you actually have to have you, your target could be anyone and you want to dispel somebody else completely and you just use the macro I use modifiers you can have like uh, alt 1 to 3 and um, something like that or shift 1 to 3 it's a matter of preference I'm used to pressing modifiers so I have like old for self so I have old E because usually I I put this on E so it's gonna be old E for myself E is usually when I just press E it's gonna auto dispel the melee I always try to play comms or I like to play comms that are melee caster oriented so I have the E without the modifier on my melee always and into V2 also it's really easy to just press E and instantly dispels the your partner without having to think about anything and then I have shift E which is the caster or the hunter or the other melee and I usually try to think because you, you won't play like for example if I play uh, warrior death knight as a shaman death knight to me is sort of a caster basically uh, he has death coil, he has grip, he has the abilities that he can use uh, at range. So, uh, Death Knight, Demon Hunter, Feral, uh, even Red, stuff like that. They seem like a range to me because they have abilities that they can use fro from distance. And therefore, I would consider them as a range. So, if you have this mentality, I guess you can use this macro uh, with ease like E always is melee, shift E is always some sort of caster like quote mark intended uh, and if you have play if you play like double warrior then yeah it's gonna get a bit confusing of uh, which warrior to dispel but that you won't play that that's not really a good comp maybe double demon hunter but still uh, you will get used to it eventually especially if you play with the same people over and over again uh, you'll just uh, make a note in your mind and you'll know exactly which uh, demon hunter uh, you will gonna dispel or you can have dispel party 1 on party 2 and then you always gonna dispel party 1 or party 2 I prefer naming I got used to that I enjoy it like that and I like to, ha to think about it like a melee caster healer type of comp anyway moving on some uh, other macros which uh, are quite interesting. So let's take here. Let's take Flame Shock over here. Uh, this basically does. Uh, what this basically does is something like this. You select your party member, and when you press this button, this macro, the Flame Shock will go on your party's target, party member's target. So you don't have to select the arena one let's say the target is you don't have to select it you just press one button and it will go 
directly to that guy if he's the target. So if your party member thinks that's the target, it will automatically go for for him and it's gonna be easier to do. And then we can go we can do the same thing for purge and like for example your warrior is sitting on a druid, you will just you know keep Urshil low, keep riptide and keep healing waving and when you press purge we, it will automatically purge the druid. Only thing you have to consider is to be in line of sight of the druid. Uh, it it makes the game feel a bit more smooth, a bit more connected. You don't have to like spam, change target all the time. It's uh, it's gonna be more fluid, uh, a better feeling to the game. You'll you'll pro you'll probably enjoy the game a bit more by using this type of macros. Uh, so I do recommend trying them, and maybe you feel that you'll have more success and it's gonna be a little learning curve until you get used to it but in the long run it's really worth trying. Hexes is exactly like Windshear, I have 1 through 3 for Hexes, it's really important that you can Hex without targeting them, uh, they would be confused on who you're going to target and who is gonna be Hexed. Most of the time they people know but it's useful to have it like this so they really don't know exactly on who it is so it's gonna be a, a delay on dispel or maybe they won't shear you because they're gonna think they're gonna dispel or like I don't know not exactly sure or shape shift or whatever anyway that's about it my macros I was um, I was using this this was the one I was using before uh, gift my artifact is also at at cursor and what else do I have that's kinda important I think that's about it oh yeah maybe this if you wanna s use it it's about sky fury counter strike and wind fury in the same macro you don't have to change it when you change the talent it's gonna go all, all on here and it auto changes so that's kinda useful and also a really important one Stop casting, which is uh, actually the most important one, especially now when there are so many melee that go on you and they kick and you try to like burst exactly into the kick. The problem that I found is that there is a slight delay when you try to move. See, I w I'm making an example right now. When you try to like. Uh, cast and move there's a tiny little delay on the uh, casting bar it's not really uh, in, it's it's still going even right after you move very slightly but in arena this effect is a bit harder it's a bit longer and you actually really need stop cast now now I'm pressing the stop cast and the bar it's there but it's instantly gone and like most people do, they instant kick. Uh, there are actually three types of players. Uh, those that instant kick, those that kick after around 50% uh, of the cast to like 70% of the cast. And then there's the third category that adapt. Those that adapt are the ones that you'll meet later on. And those are the pro players usually. And actually players that know how to play the game basically um, so the thing is you have to try to cast if you're if you're stable if you have like full HP you have to go for a cast you have to see if you get kicked you have to see when you get kicked and then you know how to play that game uh, the secret is to being a good caster is to never uh, play the same way so basically, if you're like 20% or 50%, just pop wall if they use a cooldown and go for a cast, find out when they kick, and then uh, if they do it instantly, okay, fake, fake instantly. If they do it around 50%, then fake around 50%, um, and then change it up, Ch fake faster. Uh, some people will adapt to your faking, right? And most people are doing that right now. Um, I was exaggerating, exag exaggerating a bit when I was saying that uh, only the pros do it. There are a lot of people that are adapting now. Um, 
because Legion has less buttons and less stuff to track so they can focus on uh, kicking way more. So basically you have to do some sort of rock paper scissors with them and adapt to what they're doing and therefore you have to change it up as well. You fake fast, you fake slow, you fake at the 90% cast. Uh, sometimes those 90% cast don't really get kicked, especially as a shaman. If you have the Queen's Ascendance proc and uh, Defender of the Weak proc and Tidal, tidal Waves up, that's a 0.8 second cast. So basically, uh, if it reaches 90%, even though if they kick, they will probably miss it. So you have to be careful um, to sometimes let the cast go through. Uh, but anyway, stop casting the macro really helps uh, faking this and making sure you will have different patterns through an arena, which would make you almost impossible to predict and basically never get kicked or way less than you are right now. Okay, and on that note, I'm gonna move on to talents and I wanna s talk about Undulation, Unleashed Life and Torrent. Most people, most of the guides out there, they really recommend Torrent. And I agree, Torrent is a really good talent, but in this cliff meta, Undulation is a really big burst heal potential. I am critting above 2.5 million, I am topping my partners instantly, and my mana is way better than any other shamans usually at least in cleave versus cleave like both of the sides have rest of shamans I usually come on, on top because I'm playing undulation and I am able to top my teammate in one single cast with torrent yeah you have more uptime like they will be uh, healthier but if you fall behind you will still have to cast and your huge heal will be very reliant on a crit with undulation you're not relying that much on a crit because w w every fourth cast you will have a s sort of a crit and if that crits you're done you're completely uh, it's completely fine you topped everybody so against cleaves I play Undulation. Against Affliction Warlocks, I play Undulation. I don't play Undulation against Rogues, Mages, and used to, I used to play Undulation against like Red Hunter, but not anymore. Torrent would be the best one. Uh, it really depends on your teammates, basically. If you play with a Warlock that could peel them a lot from you, then Undulation would be again the best one, since they don't really have that many interrupts. If there is a Red Hunter Priest, they have only one range interrupt, so Undulation would be really good. So you would save the Red's Bubble uh, or whatever your partner is. You can save them from using cooldowns with Undulation because of that big burst heal that will come quite often. And Torrent, yeah, Torrent uh, encourages the instant, like mostly instant uh, Shaman spec. Um, but most of the people right now they get earth shield before the cooldown it's oh, oh, I mean the, before the cooldown is reset right so they get earth shield in like two more seconds before earth, earth shield is ready again and sustaining them with torrent is just not enough S but yeah it really works but it's really effective against the rogue mage because if you try to fake there and they don't kick and then you get kicked usually rogues uh, do this thing that they either stun you instead of kicking you or they try to kick and if they miss they stun you if they don't miss they get extra time to kill you and then they stun you so that's really risky casting so therefore torrent would be the best option in a rogue in a rogue team playing against a rogue team yeah then at level 30 there's no question about it you only have this um, I guess you could play graceful spirit against me some melee cleaves but this is not really a uh, useful talent you can still get gripped or charge kicked or something like that 
the upside is that you have increased movement speed in Ghost Wolf and you would actually be faster when you're slowed. Not by much, but it's gonna be a slight increase. A chance to be a bit faster, because usually when you get slowed you have to you're back to normal speed, but you have the chance to be faster. And you're basically like a druid. Windrush Windrush would be a great talent, like a really great talent, if it was granting freedom. Uh, this movement speed increase is not really is not really doing for shamans and for their teammates. Sadly, they removed the freedom part of it. If it had freedom, maybe even with the two minute cooldown, it could have been worth it. But for now, Gust of Wind is the most important one. I would not I would not spec any of this ever. So yeah. The third talent row at level 45, it's pretty standard. If you play with a comp that are based on casters and they don't really have a lot of roots, stun is the best one. If you play against some casters, root doesn't do anything. Voodoo Totem has some utility but not always. So stun versus casters and playing with casters is the best one. I like to get root against teams like Warrior uh, and Demon Hunter and I really like to get Voodoo and maybe some Decays but Voodoo, I really like to get Voodoo against Windwalker Monks because they have the they have the 30 second cooldown of on their freedom so they basically make F grab kind of useless if they just mirror it so Voodoo Totem would also break their uh, Fists of Fury which is a lot of their stuns and burst and Voodoo Totem has a lot of value against Windwalker, like a lot of value. It works against uh, THG as well if they don't really go you. Even if they go you, you can like, pretty much free cast and use Voodoo Totem on cooldown and you, would, you will get a few casts off. Moving on on level 60 we have Crashing Waves and some other, other talents that could work. But usually Crashing Waves is the one to go in Arena. I I tried Ancestral Guidance in PV, I mean in RBGs, and it's it works. It's kind of it's kind of nice. The problem I have with it is it only heals up to three nearby injured injured party members or right members, which is kind of low. I was expecting like a raid heal ability which would heal everybody, and then yes, this would be the best one, maybe even in arena, but. Not even it's too long of cooldown for arena, but it's a, it would have been for RBGs for sure. Deluge is really good only if you play with the Spirit Link talent and you go for the Chain Hill spec, which is not as good as before because people started to know how to play against it. Uh, like RMPs will just you have a huge downside with Spirit Link. If you don't really apply it every 10 seconds or so, it will fall off while you get the ship, chip shot or whatever and then you're gonna die instantly. But if you have a really bursty team that will be able to kill an RP in like 2 minutes, then Spirit Link Talent and the spec going with it which is Deluge and Tidebringer and Spirit Link would make a huge difference because your entire team would be basically unkillable for two minutes. So that's that's something you could consider playing. Although it's a harder spec to play, it kind of really matters what comp you play. And I will not recommend it. I will not recommend it if you're a new to sh if you're new to shaman. It's gonna be kind hard quite hard. At level 75 you have some interesting talents with some potential. Uh, the rest of them is really fun. You have to be a bit lucky so they don't actually see it because it has a huge graphic upgrade now so it's really easy to notice and if they smack it you're basically dead. Um, 
and you cannot reincarnate. Another thing, it doesn't really all wor it doesn't really work against warriors because of their execute, which means if they quit an execute, you cannot rest anymore, which kind of sucks. And there's the ancestral ancestral vigor, which would be nice if you play with a target which has a lot of HP. I used to use this back when I was playing with a Fury Warrior against Hunters because Earth and Shield Totem didn't really do much because the Fury Warrior had to have app time so he was always moving out of the Totem and this was really huge because it all was also increasing my mastery heal so in huge dampening which was almost always the case I would get like 10% more increased healing basically also him having 10% more HP would be a huge deal but other than that Earth and Shield Totem would be the best so into V2 and I think mostly into V2 you can try and central the Vigor against Hunters more or less against survival Hunters because those are kinda annoying but yeah against Hunters you can try this because they run a lot and then the f ni level 90 talents which are really good you have a mana spec and a more out throughput healing spec the default go in 3 is Echo of Elements but against teams like Shadow Priest Boomkin or teams that can peel a lot MLS or stuff like that that can usually peel for so much that it's gonna be a long game and you have to cast over and over and over I will go for bottomless deaths and I will never out, will never go out of mana and will never have to drink basically if they have some sort of way to stop f you from drinking like a warlock pet, uh, starfall uh, I don't know death and decay you know anything that could stop you and they don't really have huge bursts but more of like a lot of peeling bottomless deaths would be the talent I would choose and if I having if I'm having like faith in my team that we're gonna end the game early I will go echo of elements and try to be as offensive as possible with purges and uh, double lava bursts and at level 100 it's not really a debate and sentence is the best one you have a, a, a tiny problem with it you have to be in 15 yards else uh, the duplicate part of the healing does not work so if you have if you use ascendance you have to make sure that you're in range with your team so usually uh, they either come back to you and then you ascendance and, and top everybody up or you go really ham really offensive pop ascendance spam purges and do I mean don't spam purges but Ascendance to dr just keep your team offensive, and uh, if you have to, if you pair your ascendance with artifact, then you're gonna get a huge bonus. It's gonna be like four heals from one ability, so that's a really powerful uh, combination. Also, if ha if you have like Riptide uh, on everybody, like Riptide on yourself, Riptide on the other guy, and Riptide on the other guy, all of that healing is um, duplicated. So if you guys are also all close to each other it's gonna be a lot of instant healing and moving on in the honor talent section well this is kinda kinda hard as alliance you can't really go anything else but medallion it's really hard to go relentless cause you will die uh, against most teams adaptation is easily procable and then you're pretty much dead if your team cannot ever peel and there are cases when they will not be able to so therefore medallion is the best one as alliance if you're orc or tauren well usually just orc relentless it's really powerful but it has a it has a few downsizes you are prone to swaps and if the swap is really well executed you will die through Orc Relentless 
if you don't have Earth Shield on yourself. So it's really important if you play Orc Relentless or, or like Relentless to make sure you have Earth Shield on yourself before they swap to you. Uh, if they swap out of a CC, then you're pretty much unable to do anything and you will most likely die. So that's the risk with Relentless. It's still really good. You have to rely on your partners to pill for you or to use a cooldown to help you out. Um, but if they go on your partners and they try to CC you with stuns and whatnot, then yeah, Relentless overall over a longer period of time it's better but as a general rule alliance medallion orc sometimes relentless mostly against people that have stuns uh, but you have to make sure you can swap or shield if you're gonna be the target the kill target so you have to play a bit and see how and what people are doing at the current rating you are if they go for you a lot maybe trinket would be a better solution for you or just keep relentless and always keep your shield on yourself the second row would be defender of the week vim and calming vim and vigor um, vim, uh, defender of the week is overall the best one you can have it by default against everything you can always use it it's you don't you don't really have any drawbacks with it if you're good at faking cool okay you're gonna profit a lot from that spell if not calming waters has a, has a good you know potential to save you the problem with it you you do lose the haste and that haste would be a lot of healing throughput if you miss that it's gonna be hard for you to actually uh, you know be able to top yourself or top somebody else for example when I played calming and they just kicked me on cooldown like they just did kick 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 four times in a row it was probably like uh, I think it was a THG or something like that I still died because there was like four seconds of uh, of no healing coming only earth shield and riptide so that wasn't enough instead when I played the same thing also playing calming makes you retarded a bit because you also you want to get kicked it's weird um, but against melee cleaves if they time it correctly you will die through kicks which is complete bullshit but you will and they have to coordinate and yeah it's gonna happen so melee cleaves if they're not like uh, if they're good or not, not really good if they have some sort of kick coordination calming will not cut it it will not be enough you will die with calming up I assure you so the best thing to do there is play defender because if you have to if you can fake a few times so just go for a fake they will kick you and if they kick you you will have a lot of time to top yourself before their kicks come up and or f f between kicks because some people will try to kick towards the end of the cast and they will miss it so defender would be a really good against that. Vim and Vigor would also be really good against teams like THG, but you have to play a comp that lets you be in a safe spot like MLS or maybe Red Hunter because the Hunter has a lot of CC for the Warrior and the Death Knight like Binding Shot and Bursting Shot or stuff like that. Uh, and also slows like the you know like the, the red can slow them or, or and you can slow them and you can root them as a shaman as well and yeah Vim and Vigor would be good for and that against that and usually if they go you uh, the red and the hunter or the MLS or the whatever other comp that is uh, like caster oriented uh, will get killed so fast so uh, they will be forced to go on your allies and if they go on your allies they will just die 
I mean, they won't ever die. Your allies will not ever die because Earth Shield is gonna be increased healing. Rift is gonna be increased healing. And I w would pair like Vim and Vigor with Torrent and with Echo and something like something like this. I would also go Undulation and Vim and Vigor would be like 3 million heals, which would be insane. Uh, like really fast casts, 3 million, that's a lot of a lot of healing. Moving on, uh, Sky Fury Counter Strike and Wind Fury, well the only totem that I feel that has some sort of of an impact is Sky Fury and I may I mainly mainly use it for myself. Counter Strike can get killed and usually people are killing it now. It could work in 2v2. The problem I have with it, they changed the pillar thing. If it was able to go through pillars and yeah would be would have potential. Wind Fury got also changed. You cannot place it any any longer like you will always place it on your feet, which makes it really hard to play with because you will have to go into the field of battle losing your pillar protection to cast a wind fury that can get killed instantly and it's not really worth it. Uh, purifying waters I uh, I am playing sometimes purifying waters and electrocute when I'm facing like Resto Druids and I want to go as offensive as possible this was uh, nerfed. It was 5% uh, of your total health, but 3% is still is still useful. So it's still working. You can play this, and you can play it really aggressive. It's gonna be instant heal against Resto Druid, every global. So you can try it out. Urshil Riptide and spamming Purge, you will not die, and you will eventually kill the Druid. If your uh, if your partner has enough uptime, if not, Tidebringer would work with Spinning Link, but usually, Swelling Waves is the go-to talent. Uh, it's gonna drain your mana, but it's a really fast heal that would be more effective than Healing Wave in some certain scenarios, like double melees going on you. Sometimes. If they go with another shaman or priest, they can steal or actually purge off your uh, tidal waves, and then your healing wave would be so slow, and you actually would die in that scenario. Instead, you can profit from the crit, which can be crit, you know, like 60%, almost 60% crit on surge, and that's a lot of healing, you know. And even if it get purge, at l if it get purge, your cast is still gonna be 1.5 or less. So it's it's you're you're not gonna die. Just do a few healing waves, and you're gonna be completely fine. Uh, on the next one, you have Voodoo Master, Electrocuting Granny Totem. Uh, Voodoo Mastery. I used to play Voodoo Mastery against uh, against other shamans. And having a slow, uh, really fast hex was kind of nice, but slowly, I, uh, I think Electrocute bo got buffed, Purge got buffed as well. So Electrocute is by far the best one for 2v2 right now. And for 3v3, grounding, actually for 2v2, grounding could be good as well. I am playing grounding against other shamans, which is very good for their hexes and also electric it would work but I feel like grounding has a bit more value since it got buffed. Also in TV3 especially against casters grounding I don't know if you noticed but grounding got changed and now you have to actually target the totem and kill it and only then it would stop absorbing spells. It lasts 3 seconds, but in those 3 seconds if you don't directly kill it, all of the spells is gonna go into the grounding totem and you would be able to cast whatever you want. You won't be interrupted by any casting ability uh, and chaos balls, uh, glacials and all that, they are gonna go into the grounding with no problem, with ease. So they have to kill it. 
manually select and kill the other good thing is that it go it goes through pillars so if your party member is on the other side of the pillar you're stuck in a the route they're casting like I don't know chaos bolt and uh, glacial you just press grounding and grounding is gonna eat all of the spells through the pillar which is a really powerful ability if you think about it and it cannot be killed so yeah you have to change you have to choose against electrocute and grounding so depending on your comp if you wanna play a laid back comp and just survive and eventually get a kill grounding would be the best one if else you can try electrocute and you can try it with purifying waters and be super aggressive and you you can win in the first 15 to 1 minute uh, during the arena 15 seconds so yeah you have a lot of op you have a lot of options the second row is rippling waters earth shield and spirit link rippling waters just it's not really there yet it, it misses something something it misses uh, so it's not really powerful I would never get it not even against a triple dot team not worth it earth shield the most important part of it is the damage reduction in which in dampening uh, that doesn't get dampened so a 50% damage reduction in dampening is actually 50% or healing like an extra HP it really matters so it's really powerful just because of that and uh, spinning link talent the problem with it like I said it got nerfed to 20 seconds you have to reapply it constantly if you don't reapply it at 10 seconds it will fall off if you get hit by two CC's which like for an RMP would be easy to get off and then you or, or somebody in your team will die moving on there's the artifact and the most important uh, traits in this are the damage reduction ones every time you use healing stream totem you get a tiny shield wall and you can actually try to keep this up at all times using echo of elements and uh, besides this one you also have the ghost wolf when you go in ghost wolf you can consider ghost wolf like uh, bear form it's a bit of a ramp time so you kind of have to ghost wolf um, you know pre goes and they will still go but if you do it earlier like two seconds before the go with earth shield up with the healing stream up and in ghost wolf you will take almost no damage without using uh, any cooldown you won't have to use the earth and shield you won't have to use um, your earth and central shift you're gonna be extremely tanky only with these two passes uh, another thing you have to consider is queens and sentence every time you crit heal with it will reduce your cast time and this paired with uh, like basically this alone will make your healing wave plus tidal waves this will make your healing wave to one second and then if you have if you play with the defender of the week it will drop to like 0.8 seconds or something crazy like that so you're gonna have really fast casts and um, all of these they don't really matter that much but the most important ha thing you have to remember is basically ghost wolf matters on swaps and um, using a healing stream right before if you f if you think they will switch on you if you think they will do something on you you just press a healing stream it doesn't it's only taking a global it lasts for 10, ten seconds it's not dispellable press the healing stream go ghost wolf you will be completely fine if they actually go swap on you if it's a really hard swap uh, you may actually have to use the wall or the earthen but most of the time you won't have to use anything if you just prepare for it uh, it's really the, those two are really powerful in combination and they do stack and you're gonna have a really really easier uh, much more you will have an easier time for sure 
just try to predict when they have when they want to go on you and you will be a okay yeah and that's about that's about it with the artifact and uh, I want to move on and talk about some of my add-ons I know that some people consider my interface kinda ugly I don't really deny it I I could like I could do like all the famous streamers and remove all the all the binds and have like show tooltips of wolf or ascendance on this free wall on this free uh, maybe sky fury on this free you know something like that but I I'm used to having like a really messy interface and I always liked to have uh, cooldowns in the middle of the screen basically. I hate looking down here. I don't want. I don't want to look down here ever. Only I only want to look like in this square, like like over there. You know, I want to see the uh, field. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see who's attacking me. Who wants to do anything to me? Like as as I was saying before, you can see like a death knight over here, sidestepping towards me. I'm playing max range and he's, if he sidesteps he clearly wants to come and grip or use something on me so that's gonna make uh, you predicting spells easier also you can see like I don't know uh, a demon hunter trying to like fell rush and imprison you again you can like maybe cast the grounding and get the imprison uh, you know stuff like that uh, also you can root him and then you he can imprison you and then he may as well use um, reverse magic as well or maybe he will get stuck in the root and his imprisonment will be worthless you you can ha you can do a few th a few things you know um, anyway this add-on is called tell me when and it's only set up to show to show some buffs for example tidal waves because i don't really want to look all the way up here and Around, and after that I want to see when I have Queen's Ascendance because then I know I will have a really fast cast so I can really go for a healing wave instead of a healing surge on myself other than that I can go for uh, I can see my uh, wind shear I can see my earth grab no path available well of course I can see my slow totem actually my slow totem I don't really it has a really imp good impact, but I have Glaudius over here usually, and Slow Totem is right here. So I I always glimpse in here to see cooldowns and stuff, and when I do, I also see my Slow Totem. So I didn't really feel the need to have it added as on here as well. Kind of the same goes for Hex, but Hex is like always over there in the thing. It's like way in the corner and having here the I, I mean I could have used the same logic and not add um, the hex cooldown over here but I feel like it has a bit more impact and I kinda wanna see it I usually have it up all the time because I can't hex on cooldown so I may as well just remove it but um, for 2v2 where the game's kind of slow and if you go for like 30 seconds stun into hex or st stuff like that it's actually v very worth hitting stream again like there we go we have the wall instantly so it's really useful to know how many stacks of healing stream I always try to have at least one stack always so if they go for me I can easily just do this like healing stream ghost wolf and even urshel but if i think that they won't come in and they just go for the cc i won't i won't actually urshel as well it will be too many globals and i wouldn't actually need urshel if i actually do the healing stream and the ghost wolf this is a ton of damage reduction so in like two seconds you have 20% even more than 20% and then in total you have like 40 something 40% 40 damage reduction It's for a short while, but it works really well against swaps and that's why shamans are the Probably the best all-around healer right now Because you can do stuff 
and you can completely destroy the ghosts. You can completely shit on their ghosts. They they can also play around this. They can also bait the healing streams. They can do side steps. They can do stuff like that and bait them. Uh, versus rogues, uh, you should do this always. You should try to do it as much as possible, at least into v2 where it's easier for them to go on you without actually risking much and uh, yeah I guess we consumed this topic enough but it's really important to use these spells accordingly and just by pressing them just by pressing them when you think that he's gonna come towards you just press them just by pressing them your mind will start to actually predict and it will actually maybe 4 out of 10 tries they will actually go on you and you would not die because you used the spells so this will improve your uh, arena gameplay by a lot which will make like a 200 maybe a 300 rating difference I'm not even joking it's really important okay besides this there's not really much with artifact, the only other thing it's uh, you can use deep waters with ascendance, which I already talked about, and uh, it's a really huge AoE heal. It heals for like four million almost if it crits, because every tick is almost uh, 600k or something like that, and it will be duplicated. So the duplication, it will be a crit as well. If the over, if the other um, other tick of the gift will uh, also create that's like almost uh, 3 million healing so it's really powerful and it's AOE healing and my health is what 4 million so it's a lot of healing with just one spell with just one spell that's so so powerful okay now I was uh, talking about add-ons and I went uh, I went back a bit to my artifact I'm sorry but I I can't stress that enough like I see a lot of people struggling and it really matters a lot um, okay so I ha also have Gladius as my main as my main uh, arena tracker arena frame frames tracker it's basically the default I haven't sh changed much to it uh, I re I'm recently I removed the namings, the names. I feel like uh, if you meet somebody which is a streamer or somebody that it's important, you would maybe get like excited, you know, and maybe not play as good, or maybe try to play too good, and you actually go too ham or too too defensive. You know, so actually not seeing the names, you will still see the names, but you won't see them right away, and it could improve uh, your thought process, and it could improve your ability to just ignore who they are and just play the game, which you should, you should just play the game and don't really care if it's me and Pocky or, I don't know, somebody really famous, I guess. Okay. Um, on this, I have the um, Jax, uh, Jax, Jaxington or something. He's a rogue from US, and he modified this add-on, and you can see the kicks. It's really important that you see the kicks, uh, so you don't really overlap. Uh, so basically, every time a party member or you kick the target, instead of this icon over here, you'll see the kick that is used. So if he's kicked, it won't actually um, CC into that because he's already in a lockout and you actually want to CC right before the lockout ends. And uh, that is like one or two seconds of CC that will actually land a kill in most cases. So you have to consider that as well. Other than that, uh, I have party ability bars which is pub let's just close that real quick 
this shows your party member cooldowns you can put it wherever uh, I had I had it usually I have my bars I have my bars right here with my HPs they're right over here and uh, I usually have had party member ability inside the bar but sometimes it's getting confused when they have the buffs when ha they have your buffs so recently I moved them over here and you can you can see your party members abilities right here so you will know when they have kicks you will know when they have a defend, defend, uh, big huge defensive cooldowns like bubble for, for, for an example and um, you, you know if you have to use something to save him or maybe to uh, buy some time so his bubble came, comes back you know something like that that's really important uh, besides that I have a few more actually but not as important. I have big deb big debuffs. Uh, this shows like you can have six buffs on your interface, which is really useful. And you have like a priority buff. So, for example, if you get a dispellable CC, it's gonna be bigger, and you can see it way easier. And you can just press this play, press this play instantly, dispel instantly. So that really matters. And then you have a lot of customizations and stuff like that. Like you have immunities and you have stuff like you, if he's immune to something you don't have really have to dispel. You have like spell immunity if he uses AMS. Uh, if you try to do CC on him, he w it will be worth worthless. So yeah, stuff like that. I always have crowd control as my first priority. So I, I want to get my uh, people out of CC as fast as possible most of the time I can sometimes I choose not to for example uh, let's say there's an RMP uh, and my party member gets shipped I'm not in CC yet I'm behind the pillar I'm completely fine uh, so I he's full shipped they have like all their cooldowns they have shadow step they have everything basically so my choice would be oh, okay let's dispel the guy well sometimes that would be the wrong choice because some RMPs they bait with that ship they try to get you to dispel it so they can sw switch on you instantly usually they use a fear, they use a uh, ship and uh, it's really important to see your position and the rogue's position if you can dispel while not being uh, in line of sight with the rogue uh, then go for it but if you dispel and you're gonna be in line of sight with the rogue is it's prob problematic. Try to swap Urshil before you do it and also try to pop a healing stream totem. So you go like this, you go Earth and Shield, I mean you go Earth Shield, healing stream, go for the dispel. It's gonna take a while but this this would actually save your life. Or you could just, if you don't have a healing stream available, if you don't have like Earth Shield, you, you just use it or something you may have to consider late letting uh, your party member in CC a bit longer because the the goal of RMP is usually are to make you show yourself make you like vulnerable and if they sweep switch on you when you don't have like you don't have the damage reduction you don't have like earth shield on yourself you may just die 100 to 0 especially if you're playing a relentless so yeah you have to consider that when you go for dispels and um, you're in a bad spot other than that uh, I do have a few more add-ons Omnibar which is another one I consider kinda important it shows basically every cooldown, every ability that the enemy uses I don't really, I have two, two things I have one for spells, which is like everything, and I have one for kicks, which is only uh, it's only kicks, like leap stun and uh, mind freeze and stuff like that. Or mage is only CS, and it's easier to track the, the kicks uh, by just having a separate bar instead of having all the spells crammed in like a huge bar 
and it's getting like a bit you know y it's harder to track it's harder to see if you faked or not you, you still see it but your brain lags a bit and st uh, until it sees the spell you know it's not it's not a huge difference but it could save you like a few milliseconds it's that low but also if you play like five or six hours of arena having like two separate bars it's it will make your um, your time playing way way more chill and you won't get as tired as if you had a huge bar with hu a huge amount of spells in there so yeah that's about it with the important add-ons and I have a few like Gladiator Losa is an add-on that announces pretty much their cooldowns it's not really something uh, that I'm really dependent upon like most people uh, really need this but I usually use it for the stream uh, sometimes people don't really see what happens you know and they actually need a voice activation thing sometimes consider this uh, people consider this being annoying but for someone who is new at the game and most of you are new or want to improve this is a very helpful add-on it will like expand your horizons let's say and it's really powerful especially if you don't use voice if you use voice like if you play with voice which I do recommend playing you can play way better especially if the if your teammates have a bit of experience and they co can call targets and cooldowns to use and stuff like that uh, and or and or when to run or go for a target it really makes a difference um, other than that I also have fly plate buffs which is basically on their uh, on their nameplate I can see some buffs they have like for example a guy got uh, earth shielded you can switch off him and uh, stuff like that and you can do a lot of you know you can you can do specific spells you can show something you can show things to dispel for example I should put Riptide in here you know so I can purge Riptide really easily or I should put Ghost Wolf I should you know I don't have to target the player to see what uh, buffs he has I would know exactly what he has and I could dispel it or I could like purge it you know it's really useful you can customize it to your preference and I do recommend it as well but it's not something that you really need but it's something that could help you flash test bar is uh, it's like uh, when you alt tab out of the game and let's say the Q pops your flash tags bar your, your tags bar your wow thing will will uh, just you know uh, what's it called will shine you know it, it it will have like a flick a flicker image and you will know that something happened so you will go into the game and join the arena basically and details is like recount is basically for you guys it's nice to track as well who did the more the most damage uh, and uh, who did the most healing and stuff like that usually I check this after the games I check like for example you you have deaths you can check deaths and see why did we die what happened and stuff like that what ability killed you maybe you could have used the wall or something else and uh, maybe survive so yeah it's useful to anal to go back and see what happened and uh, react accordingly in a different game versus the same team and uh, yeah uh, I think I'm done with the add-ons I think that was basically all that is mightly important uh, for PvP at least yeah next on the list would be best races no doubt the work one is the best you can play relentless plus orc I mean that's really powerful the racial of course you also get like increased healing from the activation one uh, 
and you can always play trinket it have no drawbacks then I would say dwarf is the best uh, I like that you can get out of silences I like that you can get out of root beams uh, to be fair if go gnome shamans would be a thing then yeah you just dispel the root beam with the gnome racial and then maybe a few metas ago would be the best one consider how many bonkings there were uh, but yeah at the moment dwarf would be the second best and as the third one I would say dry NA, gift of the Naru is a is quite a big heal and you also get increased stats so those stats you know bump your healing a bit a bit more uh, as a as a few tips and tricks uh, well I think a sentence plus artifact is the most healing available right now duplicates and all that it's like four healings and uh, it basically replicates if you crit or not so if your first tick crits then your uh, ascendance thing will crit as well so you're gonna get like almost 2 million above 2 million from one spell and it's AOE really important another, another thing would be calming versus uh, affliction warlocks mostly versus affliction war warlocks I think I, I'm getting the most value from calming because if you get interrupted you have 20 seconds when you can pretty much spam the spell and the UA silence would be so short that you won't, you won't get like affected and another thing about it when you're playing against affliction warlocks try to never get dotted or if you get dotted dispel yourself as fast as possible um, they lose a lot of pressures if they lose way too much pressure if you're really in the back it's safe and have no dots on you because you can easily top yourself and you can easily dispel other members of your team other than that you can pair electric plus purify and play super offensive mostly against rest of druids and maybe this priests but uh, I would only recommend against the rest of druids if you have a comp that permits you to be on the druid for a long period of time. Um, grounding, you have to keep in mind grounding is a really powerful spell right now after the change, and you can ground, you can ground, you can ground asphyxiates, decay grips, hodges, traps. Uh, you know those are basically the most important ones because like grounding ships are not really that powerful because you can just cast a rip ship so it's not a really huge impact but if you ground a hodge or a trap or a grip those are really high impact so you have to watch the their position for example like uh, death knight you have to watch if he sidesteps towards you if he does that he wants to grip you so you have to be sure if you pop your head up in LOS with him you just press it and uh, mo like 7 out of 10 times you will ground something and uh, usually it's gonna be the grip stun and if not if you're too slow you still have a chance after the grip if you just spam grounding you will most likely get the asphyxiate uh, if they're not playing with uh, Demon Hunter and then they would AoE stun and grounding would, wouldn't do anything and uh, you could also try to track DRs on yourself like very important is to know against rogues when they have stun DR on you because it matters how you fake versus them as well if he has ton available and you're a DR you can go for cast if you get kicked you still have time to cast after that the problem is if you're not on stun DR you have to fake it and if you don't fake it you're gonna get kicked and then stunned and then you're probably gonna die because it's like uh, almost 8 seconds of CC 
and even more if he vanishes and chip shots and or garrots if he's assassination. So you have to be really careful around around rogues, especially when you don't have our shield. Okay, so moving on, let's talk talk about comes to play. I would make something. Um, actually, I would like to make kind of a ranking of the easy comes to play and then the hard comes to play, harder comes to play. Um, I would say easy comms would be something uh, like Cleaves, uh, DK Demon Hunter, Warrior DK, uh, Demon Hunter Warrior, uh, Red Warrior, stuff like this that requires some sort of coordination but mostly uh, they just do so much damage you can play really offensive or really defensive and eventually with a good amount of uh, shot calling and a good a great target selection we we're gonna we're gonna burst something and we're gonna win and then would be the second category with I w which I would include again red warrior um, because the red can also have a big impact and if you coordinate well with the red you can survive a lot of stuff and then I would say red hunter again with the hoji, with the traps, if you coordinate properly you will have way more success than the other comps th which could work without voice, without coordination at all um, then uh, around that in the same level I would say shadow play, I would say all play which are uh, shadow priest variants or with a warlock or with the owl I would say FLS which is also really powerful but you kinda need a bit of coordination and uh, after this the comms that I feel are a bit harder uh, I would say Destro, Windwalker, Resto Shaman uh, RLS, uh, RPS, and Rogue, Boom, King, Rest of Shaman. These seem to be more setup oriented and more bursty, but also in the same time really squishy. So, for example, RLS with Assassination Rogue is really powerful. The problem is everything in the team is really squishy. So, uh, as Weirdly as this would sound, if the shaman stays back uh, and uh, just tries to top and tries to heal their his partners, you will lose. The general strategy with RLS is for the shaman to go on top of the other healer, so they all stack. So the fan of knives plus warlock dots would completely destroy the others, uh, the other m the other healer's mana and with switches on uh, anyone with like a blind and vendetta and sap and stuff like that or they would triple AOE them down which also works you just have to survive the first two minutes usually against any cliffs and after that you win by default it's a really hard thing to pull off because you really have to be on point with the fakes and you have to survive some brutal damage and um, if you do you will win basically any game since it's a really powerful setup another setup that I think it's really powerful is this owl rogue resto shaman it it, it, uh, it evolves uh, or actually it's more like a setup base it's kind of the opposite of RLS where you cleave as a melee caster and uh, you will have a lot of success but with all play I mean not all play with rogue uh, owl sh dancing with the stars I think it's called uh, you do st set ups with high burst potential and you one shot the target and after that you pretty much collect points over and over another really uh, famous comp right now which is pretty popular on Europe with Resto Shamans is Windwalker, Destro and Resto Shaman. Uh, the point of this comp is to try the really tank. Uh, Wong can save everybody in caps is really powerful and um, double stuns uh, 
and like cutting potential karma they go a long way versus cliffs and uh, it's a really powerful comp right now it works really really well it's not that hard to play but I would consider it uh, a hard comp only by one regard it's almost every game a dampening game if you have the patience to go for long games you'll basically win almost everything almost everything you would probably lose to really bursty comps that will train the warlock before the monk is able to peel like the monk gets stunned or gets something and then the warlock just gets destroyed you could play portal but I wouldn't recommend portal because um, Dora kinda needs to sit and cast some chaos, some big chaos bolts but other than that it should be a really nice comp in conclusion a lot of comps for rest of shamans most work and I also like to thank every every member of uh, YouTube Twitch that follows me and even on Facebook the following is growing I'm really grateful that you guys are enjoying these videos I love the conversation we have in the comments, in the live stream. Keep joining, keep commenting, keep liking, keep sharing. I really enjoy this and um, I hope I can post more. And if we reach 100 likes on this, I'm gonna do a general position guide in Arena and I'm gonna try to do it even specifically on each Arena. So give a like, subscribe, and see ya in the next live stream. Bye.